During the harsh winters of World War II, sleeping bags often turned from survival gear into, well, death traps. Soldiers encamped in frozen fields found their issued bags soaked with condensation by morning. Ice would form inside the lining, trapping cold against their bodies. Yet certain regiments across Europe and the Eastern Front had a different outcome. They stayed dry, warm, and alive through brutal sub-zero nights without relying on modern insulation. Their secret was a layered, waxed, and wool-blend blanket system that outperformed even modern synthetics. It wasn't luxury. It was necessity, born from field engineering and practical adaptation. Those who knew this method didn't just survive, they slept. And that difference often meant sharper minds, stronger morale, and fewer cases of frostbite. The real brilliance of these World War II blankets was in how they used simple, available materials. Horse wool, lanolin, wax canvas, and sometimes even ground tarp cloth to build a microclimate barrier that expelled moisture, but sealed in warmth. Understanding how it worked isn't just historical trivia. It's practical survival knowledge that still works better than many expensive outdoor systems today. In the field, condensation was the true enemy, not just the cold. Soldiers who wrapped themselves tightly in sleeping bags discovered that their body heat caused sweat and breath moisture to condense inside the insulation. When the temperature dropped, that moisture froze, creating a chilling layer of ice between them and the fabric. But the regiments that switched to the triple-layer wool and wax system stayed warm because their materials breathed differently. The first layer was a thin wool sheet, unwashed and naturally oily. This contained lanolin, a natural water repellent secreted by sheep. The second was a thicker horsehair or heavy wool blanket that trapped heat while allowing vapour to escape. The third, outermost layer, was what made the system genius waxed canvas or oiled cotton cloth. This coating, made from a mix of paraffin wax and boiled linseed oil, created a flexible windproof barrier that shed snow and sleet while still allowing limited air exchange. When used properly, the inner layers stayed dry while the outer surface handled the frost. The soldiers often placed pine branches or dry grass under them to prevent ground moisture from seeping in. It was crude field insulation, but it worked better than most issued sleeping systems. Rebuilding this forgotten system is, well, actually quite simple with the right ratios and layering. You start with a base of untreated wool, preferably with around 60% lanolin content. This serves as your internal heat buffer, really. Over that, you'll want to add a dense wool army blanket or a horsehair blend, about one to one and a half centimetres thick. And then, for the final layer, use a waxed canvas cover, made by mixing two parts melted paraffin wax to one part boiled linseed oil. Just brush or rub this mixture onto heavy cotton canvas and let it dry fully before you use it. In extreme cold, it's important to wrap the blankets loosely, not tightly. The trapped air between the layers, that's what creates the insulation you see. For ground insulation, use dry straw, pine needles, or even cardboard under your setup. Soldiers who ignored this step, well, they often lost more heat to ground conduction than to the air above. For anyone doing winter camping, primitive survival, or even off-grid living, this method can actually replace synthetic sleeping bags entirely. Unlike synthetics, which lose insulation when wet, 
This old system can be dried by a small fire without any damage. The lanolin-saturated wool stays naturally mildew-resistant and odour-neutral, which is an advantage that modern nylon simply can't match. Durability was another reason soldiers swore by this design. A good wax canvas outer layer could last several campaigns with minimal maintenance. Soldiers simply re-waxed it with field rations of candle wax or engine oil when it started absorbing water. Even when scorched by campfires or frozen solid, the fibres didn't degrade. Meanwhile, sleeping bags filled with down or cotton insulation had to be dried daily or they would rot and lose loft. In field conditions with limited firewood, that was impossible. This made the wool system far more reliable. It could be shaken out, hung over a line, and it would be ready for the next night's frost. Some mountain divisions continued to use it long after newer synthetic gear was introduced, preferring reliability over innovation. Even after the war, rural communities across Eastern Europe and Scandinavia reused captured military wool blankets for the same purpose, lining sleds, insulating barns, or creating makeshift winter coats. They understood what many modern outdoor brands have forgotten. Wool and wax don't just insulate, they cooperate with your body's moisture cycle. For those folks rebuilding this system today, a practical modern setup would be, well, one untreated wool blanket weighing about two kilograms of secondary thick wool or horsehair blanket and a two by two meter wax canvas sheet. If you're camping, place a bed of leaves or straw underneath you, about ten centimeters thick, then layer in the order. Ground insulation, thin wool, thick wool, and the waxed canvas on top. For severe cold, you'll want to double the top layer or fold the canvas in half. When cleaning, avoid washing the inner wool layers with detergent. It strips away the lanolin that repels moisture. Instead, just air them out in sunlight and reapply lanolin cream occasionally to maintain that protective film. Rewax your canvas once or twice a year, depending on use. This small effort, honestly, gives you a setup that can last decades and handle any snowstorm without modern gear. The soldiers who survived those freezing campaigns weren't relying on luck, they relied on physics and fieldcraft. Wool, lanolin and wax formed a self-regulating thermal barrier, far superior to the sleeping bags that came later. Modern survivalists who recreate this technique rediscover a truth the old armies already knew. Warmth doesn't come from bulk, it comes from balance between insulation, breathability, and dryness. So next time you prepare for winter camping or build a bug-out setup, skip the overpriced synthetics. Recreate this proven WBOSTU layering system instead. It's field-tested, renewable, and time-honored by those who depended on it when failure meant frostbite or worse. If you enjoyed uncovering this forgotten wartime innovation and want more lost survival secrets from history's toughest conditions, make sure to subscribe to Echoes of Love and share this with fellow history enthusiasts. The past still holds answers for surviving the present. One forgotten layer at a time.